if you want to increase narration speed just click on three dots as shown and increase the playback speed from normal to 1.25 or 1.5 as per your convenience welcome to chapter number two in last two videos you have seen that why we should not implement six sigma in service industry in video number one in video number two you have seen rule number one of human sigma in this video we are going to see rule number two in human sigma there are total five rules feelings are facts and emotions form the employee customer encounter if i tell you one example that the perception is reality inform wait time in case of hospital if you visit the patient waiting outside for his turn may feel a longer wait time but if i tell you the informed wait time and its perception is different if there is a need to keep your customer waiting to process his or her request the best way is to inform them using display board about the wait time informed wait time seems to be a shorter feelings are facts even though the informed wait time is more than uninformed wait time the customer feels better service and he or she carries a good perception about your company perception is reality now we will see what is bernoulli's error The right decision according to Bernali was the one that maximized an individual's wealth and minimized his cost. Every company has largely untapped enormous potential for breakthrough improvements in employee productivity, customer retention, profitability and sustainable growth. Before companies can achieve these gains, they must first improve their understanding how the emotional economy works in their company and in large marketplace. Harnessing this potential starts with a re-evaluation of how we measure and manage the employee-customer encounter or relations. Let us say employee-customer encounter as ECE. Customer satisfaction is not enough. Customers who are extremely satisfied, those who provide the highest rating of overall satisfaction with a company's products or services can be classified as emotionally satisfied customers and rationally satisfied customers. So emotionally satisfied customers deliver enhanced value to a company. To check on this, you may add a question to a customer. For example, during your stay with us or treatment with us, what touched you emotionally or what you would remember about us? Customer satisfaction is not enough, as I told you earlier. Customers want more than transactions, they want relationship with your company. One number a business must know and track over a period of time is the percentage of existing customers who would serve as a strong advocates for the company by recommending the company to others. You can divide customers into three categories. The customer can be divided into emotional advocates. Those are fully engaged customers. Second type is rational advocates. Those are the engaged customers. Third one is non advocates or not engaged customers. Your efforts should be to convert rational advocates that number two to a passionate advocates that is emotional or emotional advocates i have a question to your company what are the key emotional dimensions your company have for your employees and your customers just identify those and measure its level of satisfaction with your employees and customers the expected emotional dimensions of your employees and the expected 
emotional dimensions from your customers rationally satisfied customers behave no differently than dissatisfied ones rational satisfaction is not enough to drive enhanced financial outcomes just a small example one friend of mine wanted to put a park far away from nasik city in maharashtra we jotted down the elements in the theme park those who would attract small kids will give joy on their face and it was a successful study even though parents face issues such as long queue and high temperature in summer they come repeatedly even though parents rated this theme park poorly on their services they still come just for one reason that is to see joy on the face of their children here the emotional payoff they were looking for was seeing the joy in their children's eyes abraham maslow classified human needs that are basic and advanced basic needs that is physiological needs are oxygen water protein rest activity appropriate temperature and sex among others only when these physiological needs have been met does a person's focus shift to meeting higher order needs advanced needs are safety and security love and belonging enhanced self esteem and ultimately self actualization or realization of one's individual potential and personal completion according to schneider and bowen a customer's most basic emotional requirement is sense of security will i be safe with this company that is a question his next set of emotional requirement focuses on need of fairness and reciprocity ultimately a customer has a strong need to enhance his self esteem for example customers feel better about themselves when they feel competent and in control as we have seen three types of customers fully engaged customers have a strong emotional bond with the company the engaged customers these customers haven't yet haven't yet formed an enduring emotional connections with the company but the foundation is in place to build stronger emotional connections with them and third is not engaged customers are attitudinally and emotionally neutral they have take it or leave it attitude now here we'll see four dimensions of emotional attachment in this pyramid you can see the confidence is a base always delivers on promise first emotional dimension for the customer to get attached with your company second is integrity fair resolution of any problems third is pride treat me with respect fourth is passion can't imagine a world without this company so these are the four dimensions of emotional attachment of your customers with your service industry we'll take one by one the confidence at this is the company trustworthy can its employees be trusted do what they say will do day in and day out so this is about confidence integrity do the company resolve my problems fairly and pride sense of positive association and identification with the company out of 100 people only 4 to 5% of us like to take a chance would you like to take a risk with a hospital where very few operations are successful no would you book a hotel where sometimes rooms aren't clean my answer would be no would you continue with a bank where your monthly statements are correct only two times in a year the answer is again no so the fundamental dimension of confidence is the most basic to start relations with the company that is level 1 at level 2 of emotional attachment pyramid of customers social psychological literature identifies three different types of fairness or justice the first one is distributive fairness which addresses how resources are distributed to give me a justice number 2 procedural fairness which covers the processes and systems that are used to determine how resources are allocated number 3 interactional fairness which encompasses how people are treated at an individual level these three are social psychological literature which identifies three different types of fairness or justice here example of equal treatment consider the following service scenario you have been 
home loan customer of a bank for last 5 years while watching television one evening you see a commercial offering of a lower interest rate home loans for new customers no offer has arrived in your mailbox for a loyal customers like you based on your application of the equity rule you might question why the bank is fawning over people who never were loyal to the or loyal customers as a customer you will feel that you should get at least equal if not better treatment than non customers that inequality would offend most of the customers the need rule works even differently for example a retailer sells a small shelf units one unit is set up for display all customers need to take home an assembled unit in the box but when elderly gentleman comes in they assemble the unit for him as it would be difficult for him to assemble at home because the special circumstances or need of this individual provide an equitable explanation for the seemingly unequal treatment that is fine so number 2 i will explain about fairness procedural fairness one of the most enraging example of procedural fairness is when you call your bank's customer care to hear your call is extremely important to us please hold on and your call will be answered by the next available agent when you hear this as a customer your immediate perception is that your call is not important if you are the important then why the hell company do not have enough staff to handle the calls so this is a second procedural fairness the third rule is interactional fairness which encompasses how a company treats people at an individual level a company can excel at distributive and procedural fairness but still urges customers by the way of its service delivery after production it applies to sales and marketing people also do they always treat customers honestly and with respect this is the question are employees polite and courteous this is a question are they able to give customers their undivided attention this is also a third question i have seen most of the times in hotels or hospitals the customer relation executive are busy on phone gossiping and when customer asks they do not pay eye to eye attention while answering the query companies must monitor this through cctv cameras or cctv footages hr manager or quality manager must watch such footages and correct the employee behaviors through training and development